Hi, welcome back to QBA at Hudson Valley. I'm Mrs. Puentes, and this will be the last video on simple interest. So I hope you've printed out the uh, Chapter 2 handout and you can follow along. I will probably show you most of computer, the problems on the computer, maybe go to the uh, doc cam once in a while. But this will uh, be the last video on simple interest. So let's go to the PC. And your PowerPoints on Blackboard should start with this quote. We are in Chapter 2. And we're going to talk about simple interest. It's under the simple interest category. However, this entire unit is going to be dedicated to discount. And it's just a different way of calculating interest. Uh, discount, people like to hear the word discount. It makes them feel good if they got a discount. But it's calculated a little bit different. For example, I'm going to read this problem. If you go to the bank and borrow $500 for a year at a 10% discount rate, the bank will give you $450 and you will have to pay back $500 after one year. Therefore, $500 is the future value that you owe. What you put in your pocket, the $450, this $450 is called the proceeds. So let's look at these definitions. And um, proceeds, the money you received when the note is sold or given to you. It's the money in your pocket. S continues to be the future value of the amount. Discount, or capital D, is the cost or charge for the use of borrowing money. And discount, if, if pull out your formula sheet, discount equals S minus P, future value minus the proceeds. Discount rate is an interest rate. It's the percent that the bank gives you, or the discount. And term, T, lowercase t, is the length of the loan. And that was just like in simple interest. So here are the definitions again. But the lower part of this slide are the formulas we're going to be using. And they're all derived from each other. There's the discount can be calculated from the future value times the discount rate times the term. The proceeds or the amount you put in your pocket is the future value minus the discount. Another formula for proceeds is future value times the quantity 1 minus discount times the term. Now, if we take this formula, and sometimes I will give you the proceeds and we're looking for the future value, then we will use this formula right here. So I give you the proceeds, I give you the discount rate and the term, you're going to find the future value. And you can, there's more formulas you can derive from this, and you're welcome to put all those formulas down on your formula sheet. You just, if you're, ha if you're taking my face-to-face -face class, I'll remind you, you can't put definitions or nu numerical examples of these formulas. They are not allowed on your formula sheet. So let's go and do our first problem. You borrow $2,000 for one year from a lender who uses a bank discount rate of 8%. As soon as you, I underline it, bank discount rate, you know you're going to use the discount formulas. What's your discount? Here's our formula. D equals S times D times D. Future value is 2,000. Discount rate here is 0.08. And time is one year. So here it's substituted in the formula. And our discount is $160. $160. How much money do we walk away from the bank with? 
2,000 minus 160 or $1,840 is our proceeds or P, the amount we put in our pocket. And I, I have this in uh, a different color. Anytime you see the words bank discount rate, use the discount formulas, not the simple interest. So therefore, you borrow 2000 you put 1840 in your pocket, and at the end of one year, you owe $2,000. This will show you different ways to calculate the proceeds or the future value with that same problem. So you can, you can um, actually pause and make sure you understand that slide. Question two, you borrow $700 for six months at a discount rate of 8%. What is the discount? How much do you receive? How much is the proceeds? So you borrow 700, 600 discount rate. Discount rate, so I use discount formulas. The discount is 700 times 8%, six over 12 or $28. Your proceeds, you can stick and use this formula right here. 700 times the quantity, one minus 8% times six over 12, or the amount you put in your pocket at the when you walk out of the bank is $672. You could have also, instead of this formula for the proceeds, you could have also said 700 minus 28 and got 672. Now, here's a different way. I'm giving you the proceeds. You want to have $3,000 cash here in number three. You get a six-month loan at 12% discount rate. What size loan should you request? So you want to put 3000 in your pocket. So I gave you the proceeds. I gave you the proceeds. You want to know what you're going to pay back in six months. There's your 12% rate for six months. It's $3,191.49. There's your homework in red. I'm go slide eight or these slides, I'm going to let you look at these at your own rate. Because I want to, um, again, I told you, in these, I will not be going over every problem. I will not be going over any problem, every single problem. I'm going to go over a certain concept. The slides that I miss, I would like you to go back and spend some time and practice with your calculator. Uh, understand what I'm looking for. What are the givens? What are you looking for? Um, and do the, the slides that I do or the examples I do not do on the, on the handout, you should do. Do want to go over coupon equivalent, which is about, there's an explanation on page 45. Now, coupon equivalent is a definition you must remember. Coupon equivalent means the simple interest rate, the comparable simple interest rate. So we have, here we have discount rates. Here we have simple interest. We need a method to go back and forth between them. So on this slide, I'm, again, I'm not going to go over it in detail. I set the discount rate equal to the simple interest rate, and I find how a formula where we can go back and forth from discount rate to simple interest. If I give you the discount rate, you can find the simple interest rate with this formula. All you need to know is the discount rate and the time. You don't have to know pro proceeds or future value. If I give you the simple interest rate, you can use this formula to calculate your discount rate. Remember, a coupon equivalent means simple interest rate. So here's a problem, number eight. What simple interest rate 
is equivalent to a discount rate of 12% for 15 months. So I gave you the discount rate. So we're looking for simple interest rate. Discount rate is 12% divided by 1 minus the 12%, 15 over 12 months, and it's 14.1. So a discount rate of 12% for 15 months is equal to 14.1 simple interest rate. On the other hand, what's the discount rate if I give you a simple interest rate of 9.5% for 9 months? So we use this formula. We're looking for discount rate. Our simple interest rate is 0.095 divided by 1 plus the rate times the term, and I got about 8.9%. You can pause and do those calculations. I'm going to skip number 10. Here's some more definition. Promissory note in negotiable financial instruments that are promises to pay with interest. Their promissory notes, certificates of deposit, time deposit, sold on the basis of discount, but accrued interest based on simple interest. Now, you will see in this chapter and on test, it might say a non-interest bearing note. It does not mean it's not non-interest bearing. It just means you don't have to calculate the maturity value. The maturity value is given. If it's an interest-bearing note, you do have to do step one where you calculate the maturity value based on simple interest, and then you calculate the proceeds if it's sold before the maturity date, you calculate the proceeds with a discount rate. Let's go to 11. This is an interest-bearing. We have $12,000. It's a 270 term for 6.5% interest for 270 days. So at the two, end of 270 days, we have a negotiable security of 12585 You have to calculate this maturity value. And then if the person that's holding the note or the bank that's holding the note starts here and they're coming along and they decide, oh, I want the cash, I do not want to wait to the maturity value. I want the cash here at October 20th. You have to use the proceeds formula to bring it back here. You cannot go straight from present value to proceeds. You have to go simple interest to maturity value and then discount to when you're selling the note for cash. Let's, so you're going to have two interest rates because there's an interest rate here that you agree to, but then when you come along on October 20th, interest rates are different, so you're going to get a different interest rate. There's also a trick. There's a couple of things I'm testing with this problem. We started on June 12th, 04. I said it was a 270-day term. So you have to calculate what day is 270? We found it, there were, you went through 2004 and then 68 days in 2005, or the 270th day would be March 9th, 05. That's the 68th day. We need to calculate that so we can come back for 140 days here when we sell it. So the first step, find the simple interest, the maturity value. $12,000, what's it worth on March 9th? 12,000 times 6.5%, 270 days divided by 360, I said banker's rule, and its value is $12,585 on March 9th. Now, the bank can't wait till March 9th, needs the cash on October 20th. So we have a maturity value 
but we want to find the proceeds based on an 8% discount. So the formula, we're looking for the proceeds. Maturity value is 12000 585 times one, since the discount formula, one minus 8%, and we calculated it, it was 140 days from October 20th to March 9th. 140 over 360, so the proceeds are 12,193.47. That's the amount you put in your pocket on October 20th, 04. Now, this one, it's non-interest bearing. So you don't have to calculate the maturity value. The maturity value is given at 3,000. So all you have to do is use the proceeds formula for the discount rate because we're bringing it back to July 28th. You might want to pause it and read the problem before I continue. So we have 3,000 times the quantity 1 minus 12 percent, 140 days, divided by 360, banker's rule, and you get 2,860 on July 28th. Now on this problem, I, I could ask, well, what's the equivalent rate? 12% is the discount for 140. So you put 12, here's your formula. 12% is for 140 days, 360. The simple interest rate is 12.59. Discount rate was 12%, very similar. So this is a typical problem. John signs an 11% interest-bearing note for 3,000 on June 1st, 2004, due on December 1st, 2004, using banker's rule. So the first step is to find what $3,000 is worth on December 1st using simple interest. So here's our simple for interest formula. We found out the days. Go to your day charts. 335 minus 152 is 183 days. Banker's rule. So its maturity value is 3167.75. But the bank doesn't want to wait till December 1st. It decides on July 28th it wants to sell it at a discount rate of 12%. So we want to know the proceeds, what's in our pocket. Here's, here's the formula. Here is our future value times the quantity 1 minus 12%. 126 days early we sold it, over 360. So we put $3,034.70 in our pocket on July 28th. What's the discount? Discount is future value minus the proceeds. Future value minus the proceeds is $133.05. I could also ask what's the coupon equivalent. And we're to, whenever we say coupon equivalent, we're talking about the discount rate. So it's, here's our coupon equivalent formula. Our discount rate of 12%, that it was sold 126 days early. Banker's rule, our simple interest rate equivalent was 12.5%. That equates to 12% discount based on the, the time it was held. So that concludes simple interest. So we've had three videos that are up there. They pretty much go along with your handouts. As I said several times, I don't do every problem. I do try to do the, every single concept, but not every problem. You need to do the homeworks, which are on Blackboard. You need to read the textbooks. You can also review my PowerPoints that are on Blackboard. Have a good day.